Today we are going to be solving equations, however we're going to clear some fractions prior to solving. So let's take a look at our problem here. So we've got some fractions and typically we don't like to deal with the fractions. Well we could deal with them because they all have the same denominator, but we're going to work on this method that allows us to eliminate fractions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 5. I'm going to multiply every number individually by 5. And notice what happens when you do that. So I'll go ahead and write a 5 next to each of these numbers to show you a little bit easier to see what happens. And when I do that, the 5's are going to cancel. The common the denominator is going to cancel because 5 over 5 makes 1. So what's left over is just 1 minus x equals negative 2. And now we have a much simpler equation to deal with. So all I have to do from this point is two steps. I actually need to subtract the 1. This is a positive 1 here. And I have a minus x equals negative 3. Same sign, so I end up adding. And here I need to get rid of this negative 1 that's being multiplied by x. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 1. Or I could have divided either way. It gives you the same answer. So x equals 3. That would be our answer. Same thing on this one. So if you multiply every number here by 3, you put a 3 next to each of the numbers here, multiply, the key is to do every one, the 3's will all cancel. And what I'm left with is 2 minus x equals negative 5. And so from this point, just opposite operation. So I'm going to subtract the 2. Again, the same sign, so I end up having to add those two numbers. I've got negative x equals negative 7. So again, I said you can multiply or divide to get rid of that negative. And again, see negative over a negative makes a positive. So if I do that, the x is by itself now. And the answer is 7. Well, this next one's just a regular two-step equation. No need to multiply both sides by anything because we don't have any fractions to deal with. So I'm going to undo that equation by subtracting by 44 on both sides. When I do that, I'm left with 6. And so all I have to do from this point is divide by 3. And what that does is it leaves me with x equals 2. That is our answer. Well, the next problem is a word problem. Again, similar to what we saw yesterday, where Alex this time bought a discount card for $19.95, which allows him to buy CDs for $3.95. So this is a starting amount. So this is that discount card again. And this is where we're starting. So a starting point. So we bought this card. Okay, So we bought this card, and now we're going to buy some CDs, because that's what it allows us to do for a cheaper amount. So he buys CDs for $3.95. So this is going to end up being a variable amount. And so there's going to be a variable attached to it. This is our constant, and we have our variable amount here. He spent $63.40. That's our total. And so again, we're setting it up this way. We've got our variable amount <coughs> plus a constant, and that will equal a total. So let's go ahead and try substituting some numbers in there. It says find the number of CDs bought. So we're going to say this is, oh, how about C for CDs? So we don't know how many CDs. So we're going to take our variable amount, 395, times the number of CDs, plus the constant, 1995, equals the total, 6340. And so now we can go ahead and do some opposite operations. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that 1995 from both sides. So when I do that, I'll have to borrow a few times. So this makes a eventually a 5, but I can't quite borrow yet. Now I can. I've got a 5, 13 to a 12, 14 to a 13. So now I can go ahead and start doing the subtraction. So 5, 14 decimal point gets brought straight down, and 3 and a 4. So 43, 45 equals 395C. So now we're ready to divide on both sides by that 395. So when I do that, I'm going to move that decimal over two spaces. Do the same thing here. So really what I'm doing is 395, 395 that is, into 4,300. 45. So 395 only goes one time into 434, so I'll subtract now, and I have to borrow, and this becomes a 12, and so I end up with just a 9, and that's 12 minus 9 is 3, and I bring down the 5, and look, 395 and a 395, perfect, one time evenly. 
So there it is, 11. So the CDs we bought were 11. 11 CDs. Well, the next one, it says Joe charges $50. Okay, this right here charges $50. This is a starting point. He is going to charge $50 and then an extra amount. So this is like our constant. And so again, it says plus. That tells us obviously we have plus $60 per hour. So it doesn't matter what it's for. This is extra information. We don't really care if it's working on engines or not, but $60 per hour. This is a variable amount. And you typically know a variable amount when you've got the per hour each hour. And we'll know this is the variable when we look at the sentence that talks about the question. So we'll get to that in just a moment. It says Joe made $590. That's total. How many hours? See, how many hours? look right here hours so we know hours is the unknown that's what we're looking for H stands for hours so our starting point of $50 plus the $60 per hour equals the total of 590 and so from this point all we have to do is subtract the 50 from both sides we're left with 60 H equals this makes 540 and then we divide by 60. Now when I divide by 60, I see common zeros here. Let's cancel those out. 6 into 54, that was easy, 9 times. Wow, he worked quite some time. 9 hours on that engine. Well, there we have it. The problems you'll see on tonight's homework. Good luck.